I'm also keeping an eye on the comments, so if you see any issues, let me know. Uh, today is Throwback Thursday, and we're having a terribly literal and immediate throwback to yesterday. Um, and also to uh, last December when I gave this talk for the first time at Nerd Night SF. Uh, so what are mind-altering gadgets? These are some things that you can build with electronics without too much money or experience. Like all of these things are reasonably inexpensive and especially like um, even for the type of project that they are, they're fairly inexpensive. And of course the idea is to make your brain do weird stuff. So, uh, you know, if, you've, if you're interested in biohacking, as I know a lot of like people who are interested in building electronics are also interested in making their own brains work a little bit better. I think we like seeing ourselves as robots and cyborgs and stuff. Uh, so this is pretty relevant to most of our interests. Uh, and you can build the following projects, whether you're just starting out in Arduino or uh, if you have a little bit of extra experience, you can do the more advanced ones. All right, so uh, first up, EEG. This is the most complex thing that I'm going to get into today. Um, EEG feedback, brainwave readers, uh, same thing. EEG stands for electroencephalogram, which is basically like reading the electrical signals that come out of your head. Uh, and so your brain produces waves of uh, electricity in different frequencies. Uh, so they pulse, uh, your brain is pulsing with electricity at this very moment at a number of different frequencies simultaneously. And depending on the relative balance of these frequencies sort of um, reflects your current state of mind. And so, uh, for example, the common one that I tend to hack with, which is the MindFlex game headset. It's based on a chip made by NeuroSky, and um, that basically com focuses on two main frequency bands, that being the alpha waves, which they call meditation, and is sort of related to relaxation, and instant alpha wave boost is to just close your eyes. Uh, and you can actually see that spike on the graph, it's crazy. Uh, and then beta waves, which they call attention, um, tends to relate to how focused you are on something. Uh, the interesting thing is that you can be intently listening to someone and yet still not uh, having a super high beta wave concentration because um, it works better if you're like actively trying to figure something out or like work on a problem as opposed to absorbing, uh, even though you're paying attention. So, you know, it, it is not a great, a perfect term for those things. And of course, both of those states also reflect a number of different things that could be going on in your mind. Uh, but yeah, it's fascinating to take a look at and uh, you can hack this thing and um, pull the signal out with an Arduino. And from there you can control all kinds of hardware. So I've been working on this uh, board company, boring company hat that I'm gonna make it show people when I'm actually bored by having a, a reading uh, that will toggle when I have low attention. Uh, and again, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm bored. It could just mean that I'm like absorbing, but yeah. Um, a cool thing about this chip is that it's not super advanced, right? It's not super expensive. It's only got one channel of information, of data. Uh, so it's reading from right here, and then there's a reference channel on your ear. The more sophisticated headsets that you'll see will be like these caps that have a ton of electrodes all over your brain. Uh, and even like more expensive ones like the emotive headsets. Um, uh, and OpenBCI and OpenEEG and stuff will have a ton of different channels that they're reading at once and that basically enables you to get a much more sort of nuanced picture of what your brain is doing. Uh, so these ones you can, you can affect, uh, like consciously drive technology with this. Uh, however, if you want something that's really sophisticated for science, you're gonna wanna pick up one of the higher end ones. But I have a number of tutorials for working with this. One final point that I wanna make with uh, regard to EEG is that it can't read your thoughts. It can't see what you're dreaming. Uh, you know, it can't tell necessarily if you're happy or sad. If you're excited, it can't tell if that's nervousness or uh, happy excitement and anticipation. Um, so in order to get a good picture of that, you would want to use more different sensors in co collaboration with EEG. Uh, and it can't tell you that you're thinking of a purple elephant or anything like that either. It's uh, more of just a general sort of state awareness. Um, but I've got some tutorials on this. Um, 
let me show you what we've got. Um, along with the game headset that I have here, there is also a famous product called Nekomimi. Uh, and let me pull that up for you because it's pretty cool. Nekomimi. It means uh, cat ears in Japanese, and as you might expect, these are robotic cat ears that move in relation with what the chip is picking up about your mental state. This uses the same chip as the MindFlex headset, so it is, um, you know, it's, it's not state of the art, but it's enough for a fun little cosplay thing. And the cool thing about this is that it, it translates the signals into a motor uh, response, a physical, um, you know, driving these servos that move the ears. And so you can easily physically hack that to turn it into a different type of form factor. So for example, for a fashion show back in 2013, I built a pair of wings um, and a pair of horns that would respond to this. For the horns, I just pulled off the foam and fur ears that were already on there. Uh, and then for the wings, I took the servos off of the headband uh, lengthened the wires going to them and put them on the model's back while the rest of the headset stayed on her head so that I could have this sort of uh, a wing flapping effect. It was great uh, in that you know while I was building it it stayed in this testing mode and didn't actually really work and then of course it's on the night of the show it starts working and then suddenly the wings are just sort of flopping everywhere in a very ungainly way uh, which was a little bit frustrating but you know, it still looked pretty cool, uh, and you can achieve tons of stuff with that. Um, so I have a couple tutorials on how you can do this for yourself. Uh, the Mesh Your Brain one uh, uses a Pinocchio controller. What you'll usually want to use is a, an Arduino Uno. I found that this library uh, that I link to here, you want to check out these uh, links here for the original hack, uh, works on an Uno best. And uh, so I've also upgraded the way that it is shaped on your head uh, so that you get less of this effect and more of a sort of cool headphones around your neck kind of visual effect. So that's this. Right now I've, I've removed the Arduino because I'm going to put all the brains into a hat. But you know, this kind of sits around your neck and then you can uh, clip the ear clip on and use like a band-aid to attach the sensor to your forehead. Uh, and that way you get kind of a more comfortable, slightly less nerdy effect. A little bit more cyborgy in sci-fi and cyberpunk. Uh, but yeah. So um, go check out the original tutorial but I'm also going to be publishing more about this, especially if you stay tuned for the boring hat project. Coming back to our slides, um, next up we've got lucid dreaming. So if you're not familiar, it's when you're basically aware that you're dreaming and you're able to perhaps control things in your dreams. So if you're interested in like having more flying dreams or being able to practice a skill like martial arts and stuff, uh, or even just getting in touch with the inner you or whatever, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do with this. Um, and there's also a ton of different ways that you can induce it. So uh, some people do this thing called wake-induced lucid dreaming. There's all these acronyms. If you're a fan of acronyms, you should totally get any lucid dreaming because that's basically all you talk about. Uh, WBTB is the one that works best for me, which is wake back to bed. It means that you wake up in the middle of the night and you go back to sleep. And uh, at that point, you are closer to waking uh, and therefore you're more able to sort of reach that lucid state. So the way that um, dreaming works pretty much is that you you go through these periods of deep sleep alternating with REM sleep which is your dreaming state um, and through as the night goes on you spend more time in the REM state and more frequently as well so uh, the more that you can sort of stimulate that the more you are likely to have lucid dreams and so uh, a lot of there are a lot of projects that are based around helping you do this. Uh, one genre is the mask. Uh, people will build these masks to, um, to start up at a certain point in time, whether it's responsive, like you can have it respond to accelerometers and stuff and see when you're sort of close to waking up and then just give you a little jarring uh, effect. Uh, and often they use like little blinking lights to do that. Um, 
So I've built this mask using the Adafruit Gemma M0, which is an amazing board. Um, people can use audio cues as well, uh, all kinds of different stuff in order to try and trigger that state. Uh, but I am a fan of, at least for now, trying out this mask. It's obviously a very, a very early prototype, but it's, you know, it's very simple ingredients here. You've got a rechargeable LiPo battery, which is great because uh, having wires attached to your head while you're sleeping is not a great idea for multiple reasons. Um, it's got a couple of little NeoPixels and it's got a Gemma, which is wonderful because uh, it stores the code for it. Uh, I've, I've written this in CircuitPython. Um, and so you can come back to this board, plug it in, and see the code that's already on there and make a minor modification, save it, uh, and there you are ready to roll again, as opposed to regular Arduino where you have to like go searching through the dusty old files in your computer and try to find, you know, which one of like mask, new, v3, newest, update, you know, which file name corresponds to what you're using right now. Um, no, you don't have to do that, and you don't have to, to deal with any of that stuff. It just shows up as a flash drive. Uh, and then these NeoPixels are great because you can change the color, you can change the brightness, you can change the frequency they blink at really easily. Uh, so I think this is a great design. It just obviously needs some, like, <laughs> some aesthetic work. Uh, but, you know, when it's on, you can't even feel it. Uh, and, of course, uh, the electronics go on the outside. I had someone try to try it on this way because they were like, clearly, you know, the, the active part is, is going to be by your face, right? But no, it just shines through the mask. Uh, and I'm going to publish that tutorial actually later today. The one thing I need to, fi to fix on it is that it's also got this like really bright green LED that tells you the code is running, but it also is very disturbing to anyone sharing a room with you. All right, so uh, that's the hardware you can build for this. There also happen to be a number of different apps that you can use for this, uh, maybe in conjunction with your mask. For example, uh, Recording your dreams as soon as you wake up is a great way to promote your brains, like to tell your brain that you want to remember them, you want them to be vivid, and you, you care about them, uh, which surprisingly actually works really well. Uh, and so you can get apps that do this for you in the morning. They'll prompt you to write down what you dreamed about. Uh, and then Sleep Cycle uh, is a great app to uh, help give you an alarm that uh, responds to what state of sleep you are in. So when you're already close to waking, it gives you an extra alarm to wake you up within a certain time window, which means that you're going to be not sort of like jerked awake from a deep sleep. You're gonna be in a sort of from. Uh, so for lucid dreaming, yeah, we've got um, this Gemma mask. I actually think I have it up already. It's just um, unlisted. So you can have a look at what's up there already. And then I shall have it published later today. Yeah, as you can see, all I've got up there right now is the uh, um, the actual bill of materials. But if you stay tuned, then you'll get to see the whole thing. Next up, mindfulness. And I'm, I'm here going to check on <laughs> the uh, comments just to make sure that nothing is going wrong this time. Oh, thank goodness. OK, good. All right. so. Mindfulness, um, yeah. Mindfulness helps, again, with lucid dreaming because the more aware that you are in your everyday life of everything, the more you pay attention to your surroundings and stuff, the more likely you are to do that while you're asleep in dreams. And so the more likely you are to realize that you're dreaming. You want to be constantly questioning what's around you. Um, and it helps you be more aware of your emotions. It helps you with time management, like did I just spend 15 minutes checking my email or did I go down a rabbit hole for two hours? You know, if you're being prompted every now and then to check on this with yourself, then, um, you know, you're, you're better equipped to handle the world. And then you can also get an intuitive sense of time passing with uh, little vibrating wearables. So this is one that I built called the Hypnos Pendant. Um, and it uh, is a little 3D printed enclosure and inside there's a light blue bean with a haptic vibration motor on it. A haptic vibration motor is a little disc sized motor about this big. Uh, and it's similar to the ones that they have in cell phones. It's basically a motor with a weight on one side, so it's asymmetric, and as it spins, then that causes the whole thing to vibrate. Uh, and this is a great 
thing for wearable projects, I think, because it's silent, uh, it's unobtrusive, only the wearer can tell that it's actually happening, usually. Uh, it doesn't make any noise, really. Uh, and so this pendant that I built for mindfulness is based on the ke, which is uh, an old Chinese unit of time measurement that equates to a hundredth of a day, or uh, that's about 14.4 minutes. So uh, about every quarter of an hour you would be checking in your, with yourself when this thing gives a brief little vibration. Uh, or you could set it up to be lights or a little tone or anything, uh, but ideally something that's not going to annoy your coworkers or whatever. Um, and I have a tutorial for this guy. Uh, I definitely recommend trying this, if only as an experiment, because you never know what it's going to end up signifying for you. As I mentioned, it has there are all these different reasons why you might want to check in with yourself on mindfulness, and um, yeah, it, even just wearing it for a day can lead to some really interesting insights about how you spend your time that you weren't aware of. Um, Next up, hypnagogia. So this is an interesting one because uh, it's a state of mind that is uh, usually encountered when you're leaving sleep and waking up. And uh, so you're in this state where you're very capable of creative thought and also problem solving. And it's been harnessed by a number of different um, artists and scientists over time. A couple of famous examples that may be apocryphal, I don't know, but like Edgar Allan Poe and Salvador Dali are supposed to have used this in order to inspire themselves and solve problems. So what it is, um, or the way that you would induce this state in yourself, is that you go to take a nap, but you're holding, for example, a spoon in your hand, uh, and then at the moment that you drop off into sleep, like actual sleep, um, the spoon falls from your hand and clatters on a plate on the ground and wakes you up again, at which point you can pick up the spoon again, let yourself sort of start dozing off, uh, and then keep yourself sort of in this cycle of dozing and waking and dozing and waking, uh, which is very fruitful for any kind of sort of creative work. Now, we live in the 21st century, and there are better ways of doing this, or at least, you know, less sort of potential for breaking your, your china. And we can use electronics for this. In fact, you can use almost exactly the same thing we just did uh, for the mindfulness pendant. This one uh, is just a simple switch that you turn on. And then every now and then uh, you can program it to be a random amount of time between 5 and 10 minutes. Um, I just stuck it on, I usually choose either 5 or 10 minutes just because I haven't been, I've been too lazy to program in a random function yet, but if you use it a lot I would recommend uh, doing a random timer just so you don't get acclimated to it. Uh, and yeah, uh, then it, it'll vibrate or beep or whatever to wake you up. Uh, and you can wear this as a pendant, which looks pretty cool, it's based on a Nautilus shell. Um, so this project is called the Nautilus Pendant. Let me pull that up for you. Here we go. Uh, and I've got a 3D printed enclosure there ready for you to print up so that you can wear it. Uh, here's what the guts look like. It's a tiny lily, which is an Ar a tiny little Arduino uh, that's programmable through an, a little custom cable. But the, the board itself costs only about $10. And again, there's that, that little round disc on top here is a haptic vibration motor. Uh, and then I simply have a switch, and the whole thing is attached to a coin cell battery holder. And here is the enclosure. Uh, and I made another version of this recently, actually, uh, which was based on the uh, Amazon Dash button. So if you were watching recently, you might have seen me hack one of these guys uh, and take it apart and use a light blue bean controller, uh, which fits almost perfectly inside of here, put a button on it, and a haptic motor inside, and it's also powered by a coin cell. Uh, and there, you know, then you have a pocket size one that you can just keep in your pocket or put it on this little pendant thing that it comes with. And that's another really easy way to make a little sort of brain state inducing piece of technology that you can have around with you. Uh, and so that anywhere during the day at a cafe or whatever, you can go into this sort of like 
napping state. Maybe you would you would want to not do it at a cafe because maybe you'd get kicked out, maybe somebody would run off with your backpack or whatever. So, you know, exercise judgment. This is a theme that's going to come up again later. <laughs> so, um, yeah, here's a picture of the one that I made from the reinvent button. You know, you can just stick another little button underneath uh, that one that's that's built into the original device. The nice thing is the button itself is actually attached uh, loosely to the top so that uh, it it's really easy to reconfigure and put back together. So there's a couple of other ones that I want to explore but I haven't really gotten the chance yet. One of them is uh, the fact that your memory uh, powers are very easy to evoke with smells, tastes, and sounds. And so a friend of mine created a company called Sheepdog Science that was working on a product for this. I don't think it actually ended up being a consumer product, but I want to work to hack basically a diffuser, uh, an aromatherapy diffuser to make it IoT controlled. Uh, and the idea is that if you, you know, if you create a, an environment where you're smelling or tasting something specific, and then uh, while you're studying, and then if you chew the same flavor gum or whatever while you're taking a test, you're more likely to easily recall the things that you studied before. And the same thing with listening to music. Uh, if you've ever noticed that uh, you come back to an album that you listen to all the time, like a decade ago, and uh, all of a sudden you're just like right back there. You know, you can do the same thing for studying or reading books or whatever. Uh, and I think it's a really interesting way of manipulating your mind in a positive way. Uh, and again, it doesn't require anything invasive. This is just something that happens to be in the room with you. Uh, and so you can easily tell like Alexa to turn it on or whatever when you want to be in a certain frame of mind, uh, if you want to induce a meditative state. Another thing, this could also be used for lucid dreaming, for example, uh, if you want to uh, do sort of visualization meditations or intention setting while you're in a certain state uh, with certain smells and sounds going on around you. And then if you replay those again while you're sleeping, perhaps it would have an effect upon your sleeping mental state. Again, I haven't tested this. I want to. This is why we build electronics. Uh, super cool. And then finally, um, there's another mental phenomenon called ASMR, which some people have and some do not. Uh, it stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, and basically it's a kind of frisson. Uh, there's some technical distinction there that I'm not totally familiar with, but uh, it basically can give you shivers up your spine and make your scalp tingle and put you into this really sort of blissful, relaxed state. Uh, when you receive experience certain triggers, for example, uh, if someone whispers in your ear in a certain way. So there's, if you look on YouTube, there's like thousands of these really weird videos of people like whispering at you and moving little things around on a desk and like, or like pretending to give you haircuts and stuff. And I honestly find those really creepy, but I do like ones where, for example, um, you are, um, they're recording it while underneath an umbrella on a rainy day. And okay, there's like, raindrops falling on the umbrella all around you. I have actually listened to these at work and since I have ASMR uh, it's actually too distracting because I just get completely blissed out and I'm like oh I can't focus on you know answering emails right now I just want to like sit back and relax. So you know there's a time and a place for everything but uh, I want to make a little portable ASMR machine which originally was just going to be a little iPod, but then I lost my little iPod. So there's a number of cool little audio player boards that you can find. Uh, and if you just power one and have it on a little clip with some buttons, like say one for raindrops, one for, uh, I don't know, there's, for example, music that's recorded uh, to give you this spatial sound feeling. Uh, and if you have different buttons for that on the little machine. You can clip it onto your belt, you can plug your headphones in, and just experience instant bliss. Uh, so one of the most important things about this is that you usually have to listen to these recordings with headphones on, and that's because they're recorded in this special way called binaural stereo recording, uh, in which uh, you get this 3D sound effect. And on Instagram a couple days ago, I shared this video showing you 3D prints of human ears. 
Uh, and that's because in order to create these kinds of recordings, you have to record from a model, from inside a model of a human ear. And that's because the way that your ear, your outer ear is shaped, the pinna, um, that actually modifies the audio signal so that instead of just perceiving left and right, you can also tell whether a sound is coming from in front and back or up and down. And so this sort of spatial sound is really key to achieving this sort of ASMR state. Uh, you can do it without it, but I think it's a lot harder. And in order to listen to those recordings, you need to use headphones because that's how you get this spatial effect. Um, so yeah, that's another thing that I want to build for this. Uh, I have this note at the end of this slide that says, do we need this? And that's for a very specific reason, because there are, all of these examples that I've given are non-invasive. None of these requires you to actually attach wires to your head. I mean, except for like, you know, with a band-aid, you know. Uh, you don't, you're not putting anything into your brain except through your ears or whatever. You know, uh, you're mostly just reading from it or using sort of much more conscious mechanisms to induce these unconscious changes. Um, and a note on that. Yeah, why would we do this kind of stuff? So for experimentation, experimentation is fun. Learning about electronics and learning about your own brain are both really cool. Uh, skill building, you know, learning how to build new things. Uh, and how to learn how to build things as well, like as a meta skill. And also because why not? Why would you not explore this stuff? Well, there are a few good reasons why not. One of them, uh, let me just show you this thing called Pavlock real quick. I'm gonna pull it up in a new, in the other window. Because there are, there are things that put electricity into your body. Pavlock is this wristband that shocks you in order to help you change your habits. Now, the, the mindfulness wearable that I showed you before, the one that gives you a little vibration every 15 minutes, that's intended partly to help you break habits. You know, you can check in with yourself and see, have I done the habit? Have I not done the thing I needed to do? Like, how's my posture, etc. Well, Pavlock takes it a step further and gives you actual electrical shocks. And I think it might even be possible for your friends to shock you. And this is actually really popular, uh, it turns out, among people, but it's also built by a professional. This is someone who put a lot of research into this and uh, you know, accepted the risks that came with that and presumably made a decent effort to keep it safe at the same time. Most of us are not professionals in the realm of shocking humans, uh, hopefully. And um, yeah, I guess if you really want to try this on your own, you can get a TENS unit uh, that is designed to shock humans. Uh, in a non-hazardous way, you still want to be careful with it and especially never let electricity cross your heart. That's a big one that you learn about uh, and learn about the difference between voltage and current and which ones are harmful to you and what levels. Uh, but yeah, if you want to experiment with that kind of stuff, you can go with Pavlock, you can go with a TENS unit. I just stay far away from that because I'm not interested <laughs> in shocking myself for science. Uh, no matter how beneficial, uh, you know, I haven't yet gotten to the point where I am desirous of that. However, there's another thing that uh, people also play around with called transcranial electro... Oh, well, no, okay, they don't, they don't play around with it. Researchers in research facilities use sophisticated machines to test hypotheses using transcranial direct current stimulation, which is basically applying wires to your skull in different places uh, such that they can pass current through your head, uh, your brain at specific points, and that can be used to increase attentiveness, increase memory retention, uh, and help people learn stuff. And they've been testing this in the military. I think they might have tested it with people playing games and stuff. This is something that you don't want to DIY. And I only say this because I have answered a question online for someone being, uh, who was asking, uh, I want to build my own TDCS rig. How do I do it? And the answer to that is you don't. <laughs> you don't. You, if you're not part of a research facility, 
uh, or if you don't have a friend who is a highly qualified, experienced professional, you know, or if you are yourself not experienced with this stuff, this isn't something you DIY. Uh, don't go into transcranial direct or alternating current stimulation uh, as a fun learning project because please, I don't want to be responsible for you uh, shocking your brain into some kind of unfortunate state. Uh, there's another one as well, transcranial magnetic stimulation, which is where they deliver a magnetic pulse through your skull. And there's really cool videos on YouTube about this. Like they can make your muscles twitch and stuff. Um, they can make you have different kinds of experiences. And it's fun to watch on YouTube, but it's not something that we DIY. Okay, so that said, <laughs> you can find the slides for this presentation online. Uh, at bit.ly slash nerdglow. There are a number of projects that uh, I've referenced, tutorials for all these different types of things that you can do. Uh, I'm going to be posting more. In the meantime, you can yeah watch out for the Gemma-based lucidity mask as well as the dash button. Uh, mindfulness, or, or no, that's the hypnagogia hack that I'm going to be uh, uploading soon. And those will be both going on to my page at hackster.io slash glowaski. Um, yeah, stay in touch. Please feel free to comment and ask questions. I love talking about this stuff. In fact, I'm going to go on Facebook right now and see if anybody's got questions uh, in the moment. Someone says, what about acoustic stimulation? So I'm not sure what exactly you're asking about there. Uh, there are a number of things that could refer to. For one thing, the ASMR uh, approach, like stimulation, is acoustic because that is um, that is a type of audio input that modifies your brain, uh, causes you to feel euphoria, basically. Oh, you know, there's another one that I didn't mention actually, and that's binaural beats. So binaural stereo recording is recording regular things, like you know, snaps in your ears and whatever. Um, with a specialized recording rig. There's this other thing called binaural beats that people sometimes do. Uh, and you know what? Actually, I had a tutorial on this. Um, oh, I'm not going to be able to find it right now, but uh, I'll link you to it afterwards. Okay, there's this... Uh, let's start from the beginning on this. Binaural beats are a phenomenon where supposedly you can entrain your brain waves to certain frequencies by feeding those frequencies in through your ears. So brainwave entrainment via, for example, if you want to stimulate alpha waves, you would play audio of that frequency in through your ears. However, our ears can't hear tones that are that low frequency. And so in order to produce that effect, they will play different frequencies that you can hear in through your ears. So for example, if I wanted to stimulate, like cause my brain to create more, uh, more brain waves at the frequency of 10 hertz, what I would do is play one tone that's say 220 and one that's 230 or 210. And when you play two frequencies uh, into each ear, or one into each ear, and they're 10 uh, hertz apart, then you will hear a 10 hertz beat, uh, which is a pulse of sound, um, sort of a, yeah, a pulse, I guess, <laughs> that happens 10 times a second, because that's the difference between the two frequencies. Uh, and you can actually do this with any two frequencies. It's just that like, usually you want to do it with one that's sort of lower, and therefore it doesn't feel as, unpleasant to listen to. You could do it with 440 and 450 or, you know, 880 and 890. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as it's in the hearing range and they're 10 hertz apart. Uh, likewise, if you wanted to make a 12 hertz beat, you'd just use 880 and 892, for example. Um, so there are tons of recordings on the internet uh, and videos, meditation videos and whatnot that you can get. Some have like recordings of people saying stuff, some have like rainforest sounds. Uh, and I've tried these and all they've really given me is headaches, but I hear that some people like them. 
I am not familiar with how legit the science behind them is, uh, but everything that I've talked to you about so far in this episode uh, is something that is that you can Wikipedia and be like, okay, yes, this is an actual legit thing. Uh, yeah, so let's see if there's any other questions. Best example is the Pokemon music that made kids depressive. I'm not familiar with that, but I will have to check that out. It sounds like you were talking about binaural beats, so that's cool. Yeah, that's how binaural beats work, uh, and they may work for you, they may not, um, you know. Feel free to give us feedback. All right, that's all the questions I've got right now. Uh, thank you for interacting. Uh, I hope that this has been illuminating for you. I'm so sorry this didn't work out yesterday, but I'm glad that we got it to happen. Uh, and now for the rest of today, I'm gonna be hacking on this boring company hat and trying to make it do EEG stuff. Uh, I've had a couple of setbacks with that, um, just getting the signal to come through, so I'm gonna try sort of starting from scratch. Uh, and yeah, I'll be live on Twitch. That's on Hackster.io is the username. Same as on here, same as on YouTube. Stay tuned and uh, hack on. Have a great Thursday.